Dave, come in your way, sir. Yeah, yeah, McFarland Babes. Hey, what's up, you guys? Shortimus Prime here doing another NECA Pacific Rim movie figure review on the Anchorage Attack Jaeger Gypsy Danger. If you're trying to get this figure yourself, you can get it. Big, big, big. big. Get your big, badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. Big thanks to NECA Toys for making this review possible. If you want to see the latest coming from NECA, please check the link in the description below. This is a very cool looking figure. Very battle damage Gypsy Danger. See right here, it says all new figure with battle damage. And it says right over here he's taking down 10 kaiju. Wow, that's a lot of kaiju. Then over here you can see there's Tacit Ronin, Hong Kong Brawl, Gypsy, and Romeo Blue on the back. Anyway, let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here's another Gypsy Danger figure out of the packaging. And a very cool looking piece. Now, they've reused the body mold from the Battle of Hong Kong Gypsy Danger or Gypsy Danger 2.0. And they've just added some bits or taken away some bits anyway. You could obviously see his left arm has been devoured by Knife Head. Then we get the plasma cannon right over here. And then there's part that are eaten out over there. Oh, poor Yancey, uh, that sucks. You can see they've kept up with a nice paint detail and everything on here. Now this guy is a slightly different color of blue than the version 2.0 Gypsy or the Battle for Hong Kong Gypsy Danger. But overall, I mean, it's very similar. Poor Yancey, man. Oh, man, that's where he just got ripped out of the Jaeger. I do like this detail right here. I do wish that they added a little bit of color variation in there. I don't know. There's, like they have some. We do have some orange coming around the outside of it. But having a little bit of silver paint in the inside of these scashes would have been pretty nice. Same thing with this part right here on the chest. I do think it looks awesome, especially the sculpted detail that they added on the inside of it over here. And a little bit more color variation on the inside would have been nice. And you get all these little orange pieces right here, I guess, are representing sparks or flames from all the damage and stuff. Same thing here with this mangled left shoulder, which does look very cool. Now this looks like it does have a little bit of silver on it, which I think looks very dope. So I do get my wish right there. That looks pretty nice. And looking on the back of it, you can see all the little wires and everything dangling around. The back of the figure looks pretty good too. Like I said, they're consistent with the paint. I do like the bit of black that they've added to the blue. Nice silver and black right over here on the back of the figure. Looks very good. Shoulders painted nicely and everything. And we get the new plasma cannon looking really cool. I dig this a lot. I'm very, very glad that they've finally given us one. And I like this effect that they have over here. It looks like it's actually lit up, but it's not. Yeah, I really have to darken my settings so you can see that it's painted white in the center and it has a light blue on the outside. But, you know, in real life, even when I look at it sometimes, it looks like it's lit up, which is really cool. So very well done on the paint apps for that. I think that's really cool. Now, this does have an interchangeable part, so you can pop this off. And, yeah, and it comes off not too bad. But, you know, just like all these other Pacific Rim figures, I do recommend that you do use a hairdryer before you start moving the joints around or start, you know, popping pieces off and stuff like that. That so you can see we get some more sculpted detail right there. And the regular left arm actually shows up in two different pieces, so you just gotta put the fist in right over there and then just peg this right back on, and then you get your normal gypsy danger left arm. Eh, it could be kind of a tight fit. Yeah, it's kind of a tight fit, but you know, there it goes, it's on there. And it's the same exact right arm that we got with the other version of Gypsy Danger or the Hong Kong version. And then again, we get a nicely painted core. I keep calling it an arc reactor, it's hella not. Then again, the paint on this is just really well done. And looking at the bottom of it, you know, there's nothing really too new or different with the rest of this guy. It's just a slightly different color blue than the other Gypsy Danger. And you can see, you know, it's very similar in color, just a little bit more black and dirt, you know, added to this one as opposed to this one. Now this one, if you wanted to add the plasma cannon to this guy, you could still do that, which I think is really badass. See, so now you have your fully operational Gypsy Danger with the plasma cannon, and I think that's really cool. Now articulation wise, of course, it's the same as the Hong Kong version. Uh, you can get him to look up, and he will look down a little bit, rotate side to side and you do get a little bit of neck pivot even though it's quite tricky to move around. This shoulder right here can move in and out a little bit and you can rotate that forward if you'd like so you can have it facing forward at you. Uh, the shoulder right here moves in and out and forward. You do get a bicep swivel and then you have the single jointed elbow and then you get the ball joint right there and you could rotate that around and move it in any which way. If you have the other hand it has the same articulation as the regular Hong Kong Gypsy Danger where you get the wrist rotation and everything on a ball joint. Now he has a diaphragm joint over here that can rotate side to side pivots side to side and crunches forward and back only a little bit. He does have uh, the hip joints are a bit weak on this guy but he can kick forward a bit and move back. He does have an upper thigh swivel, double jointed knees. His feet don't really move down so much. He does have a toe bend right there which is really cool and he does have a side to side movement and some ankle pivot. And he still has the peg holes at the bottom of his feet. And Gypsy Danger stands at about 8 inches tall. And then here's our new Gypsy Danger compared to all the other Gypsy Dangers that we've gotten from NECA in the 7 inch scale. So here's the very first one. Here's Battle Damage Gypsy Danger. Here's Battle of Hong Kong Gypsy Danger, and here's the Battle of Anchorage Gypsy Danger. 
Whoa, that's a lot of Gypsy Danger. And here's our new Gypsy Danger compared to the Battle Damage Knife Head, whom he's meant to be displayed with. And here he is next to the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. So if you're trying to pick this figure up, you gotta be a huge Pacific Rim fan. I mean, we've already had so many Gypsy Danger figures come out. And to get this guy, you gotta have the Battle Damage Knife Head so you can get that display going, which is gonna be awesome. Anyway, I hope you guys liked my video. If you did, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button right over there. Check out my last two videos on the side over there. And I'm gonna have a lot of fun taking pictures of this guy, so check out my photo gallery over at ToyNewsEye.com and make sure you follow me on the Instagram as well. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.